Welcome to Smart Remarks, where as a Steeler fan, we still hate the New England Patriots. But aside from that, stay strong, Boston. So it's been some kind of a week. Obviously, the big news is the Boston Marathon bombings and then the uh, fertilizer plant explosion down in Texas last night. But sort of lost in the shuffle is the fact that the Senate voted down a plan to expand background check for gun purchases by a vote of 54 to 46. So let's think about this for a moment. In a week when the nation is reeling from the Boston bombings, Congress has opted to do nothing about our latest school shooting, the Newtown Massacre. In fact, if you're like me, you've probably seen uh, some of your conservative friends on Facebook be posting stuff like, well, when's Congress going to make uh, pressure cookers illegal, huh? Because pressure cooker bombs were what went off up in Boston. But let's turn this around a little bit. If, as the gun crowd insists, it's not the gun, it's not the implement that kills people, it's the person who pulls the trigger, I have a question. Why should bombs be illegal? Why shouldn't you be permitted to own as many bombs as you want? A federal law makes it illegal to make or possess a quote-unquote destructive device, but why? Certainly pipe bombs, improvised AR IEDs are meant to kill and maim, but so is, for example, the AR-15. I'm sure the AR-15 is a lot of fun to shoot. I bet it's a lot of fun to set off an IED in some field somewhere. I've never done it. But the bottom line is in both cases, these are implements that are constructed specifically to be deadly, to be lethal. But yet we have a right to one, and we don't have a right to another. And to suggest that we maybe should not have a right to either is to court outrage in this is America circa 2013. We're freaked out now about the Boston bombing, which is entirely appropriate. But according to Slate.com's ongoing tally of gun deaths, gun violence since the Newtown shootings, on the day, same day the Boston bombings killed three people, at least 11 people were killed by gun violence. On April 14th, the day before the Boston bombings, no one in America died from bomb explosions, but at least 14 Americans died from gunshots. The day before that, it was 23. The day before that, it was 17. And on and on and on. And in response to this, we say, oh well, I guess we'll just have to live with it because liberty. Do you think we're going to say the same thing about the Boston bombings? Do you think Congress will uh, shrug its shoulders and say, well, you know, there's not, not anything we can possibly learn from this. Nothing we could do without infringing upon Americans' freedom. We're just going to have to deal with it. Or will Americans demand something be done? And if it be done, and if it turns out that the Boston bombings were perpetrated by people from the Middle East, Islamists, do you think our friends on the right will shrug their shoulders and say, well, we shouldn't blame all Muslims for the acts, acts of a few. Just because a few people are murderous doesn't mean an entire group of people from the Mideast, or perhaps those who own guns, doesn't mean they're all murderous. I think we know the answer to that question, and I think people are going to be outraged that we would even ask it. But here's the bottom line, folks. Both Newtown and Boston inspired legitimate outrage and cries for something to be done. In the first case, we've decided, well, we're not going to do a darn thing. In the second case, do you think we're going to come to that same conclusion? <laughs>